So welcome back. I'm going to start my first painting. I'm going to be doing several um, paintings from the beginning and a lot of them are going to be kind of sunset sunrises um, and then I'm going to, you know, they're going to seem kind of similar but I'm going to throw probably some um, specific sub subject matter into it to make it my own. Um, and I tend to not know what I'm going to do until actually I get the background because that really is the background and the background can take a long time just because I want it to pop. I want it to um, have that dimension that oil colors bring it. So I tend to take my time when it comes to background. Um, I don't know if you know the, um, I forget the, the term, I think it's a, a 90, the 90 rule or whatever. But basically, um, you want to cut your, your canvas into um, thirds horizontally and thirds ver vertical. So you have like kind of nine different areas um, and that's supposed to be more pleasing you know to the eye and all I'm doing right now is just adding um, kind of a wash um, I'm using oils and a little bit of uh, I use um, Gamblin paint paint colors and I'm just using their um, I guess it's not a turpin turpinoid it's um, gee I forget what it's called um, It's called Gamsol. I'm not sure what it is, but it's it's what I use to clean my brushes. If I if I want to um, do a wash of any type, um, then I use this. Otherwise, I'm using um, I use Liquin to do my glazing with, and that that um, helps give it dimension because with the with the Gamsol, you know, when it dries, it just uh, the stuff that makes it thinner just kind of evaporates and so the pigment just lays flat on the canvas and um, but with the liquid it doesn't lay flat it's more um, three-dimensional in the sense that the pigment still floats in the clear substance of the liquid whatever that is and again you know I I'm really not interested in memorizing this the science I just want to paint so um, so I just let it flow and I don't really worry about the mechanics all that much which you know I'm sure some would say I'd become a better painter if I did but you know if it removes the the enjoyment of the process then um, I'm not I'll pick it up I'm sure for you know as time goes by I'll pick up a lot of stuff and you know so will you but you'll do it at your speed that you know you're comfortable with and that's that's the main thing is that um, it's what you're comfortable with not what anyone else is and I think you know some people they they need the the discipline of being in a class and and having to do homework and that kind of stuff but um, that tends to shut me down so I kind of just like to go I and I also do the um, the framing of it even though it's a it's a I'm using a narrow frame I think this is a, a quarter inch frame maybe a three quarter inch or a half um, I still do the I copy the the picture on the front of the canvas to the sides because a lot of times um, people just hang without framing that's really popular right now or they also um, put it in one of those um, floating frames, I think they what they call it. So you the, the, the sides aren't actually covered covered up. So um, so I do cover the sides. So I I know that huh, look at that. Okay, I need to cut that off. Um, and this is this is just a studio canvas that I um, I do a lot of 16 by 20. Um, I bought them in bulk, um, so they're not the high. These aren't the highest quality um, canvases that you can get. Um, I do like the um, the gallery wrap canvases the best, um, but unless I can get them at a really good sale price, then um, 
I'm not really interested in them. So, so here I'm just, you know, this is not going to be the actual painting. Again, I'm just kind of um, covering the canvas. I'm not really interested in um, what's going to, what the picture is right now. And that's, that's simply because um, all these little holes, and you know, these are pre-gessoed canvas. You know, I don't do anything to them. And I wish I, I mean, I, I guess it would be different if I did. And there is a new technique that I'm learning that, I tried, I tried that technique with, um, um, without adding additional gesso, and I think I would probably have to in order to um, get rid of some of that, that tooth mark, I guess, the weave that's in it. And that's really what, to me, this is all about, is that um, if you don't get the color in the weave, then when it kind of dries, you'll see little white dots. And um, I guess for me, I just don't really care for that. So, so this is just me covering it. I'm going to go all the way down with this black. And I probably could use a bigger brush, but um, I don't know. Maybe I like the, the motion of it. And then I'll just let this sit for a couple of days so that, you know, it gets dry enough where I can put more color on it and it doesn't blend it. It doesn't mix with it. Because um, oils, you know, oils take a, a, a time to, to, to actually um, dry. And I know some, you know, I don't, again, the science behind it, um, you know, basically it's like thick over or thin over thick is is kind of what they say but I don't you know I, I'm not expecting my work to last a hundred years <laughs> so you know and I think um, what I've done so far in my work that that are several you know years old that I still have for myself you know nothing has happened to them so um, I'm not really worried and I'm really I'm really not worried, worried about the, the brush seeing these brush strokes either because once again I'm gonna go be I'm gonna go be going over them and um, you know brush strokes that's what makes an oil painting an oil painting or a painting a painting if you um, if you look at a, a picture on a wall and you don't see the brush strokes of any kind then I can guarantee you that it more than likely it's a print of a painting Nothing wrong with that, you know. I have some. I have a print of, of one of my paintings, and I think it's great that we have that ability, you know, so that um, because I don't like to paint the same painting over and over again. I can't imagine how people do that. Um, I would get bored <laughs> big time, and I've done that. I've done, and they never come out the same, which is great. I did it of a lion. I'm all, I'll maybe show you sometime. Um, and I, I actually did it three times and it came out three different ways because the first one I did, it sold right away, but the same time that it sold, two other people wanted it as well. So I agreed to paint, um, the same painting, you know, two more times. And the amazing thing with that is that intention has a lot to do with your paintings. I do not paint when I'm tired. I do not paint when I'm in a bad mood because it will come out in your painting. And you may not know it, but it, the energy that you are projecting will be reflected in your paint. I was in a, a gallery in Santa Fe several years ago, and it was all abstract art. And, you know, again, like I said on my first video, that abstract art, you know, I just kind of don't get, you know, <laughs> so... Um, and all I'm doing, I'm still adding a little bit of my Gamsol just to straight black. That's all I'm doing because this is going to be darker at the at the bottom. But it, it will change when I do glazing. So glazing will define what I'm actually doing. Um, but anyways, I was walking. And it's one of those old Victorian, you know, homes that um, that you can walk has a central hallway that goes from the front to the back and. You can walk in the front parlor room and go into the next room and go around in this big 
So there was kind of like, I guess nine rooms, no, six rooms, um, three on each side and they were all connected. So I just slowly walked from one room to the next to the next. And I got to, I think it was room number, it would have been four. I went down one side of the house and I was going back to the other side. And in that room, I couldn't stand being in that room. I had to leave that room, I mean pronto. And it was just it's such a, a bad energy in that room. Um, but the moment that I stepped in the next room, it was like, ah, it was like peace. It was like, you know, almost coming home. And I thought, and I had never really experienced something quite so dramatic before, so profoundly right there in your face type thing. And so I just simply looked back, I looked at the painting in the room that I felt like I was coming home to, and then I looked at the painting, I just, I just peeked through the doorway and I looked at the painting in the um, other room that I just went through really fast, and I have to say they looked exactly alike. They were both, you know, white backgrounds with colored, you know, string type painting all over, you know, like dripping strings like painting. And I could not understand at the time what the heck was going on. Um, but when I got home and I um, did this lion painting and um, each painting I had a different focus on and I didn't realize that I was the second and third painting. I mean, I was just focused on the individual who wanted it. You know, one was a female and I kind of had, you know, the idea of adoration. And that's how the lion picture, the eyes were just adoring eyes. It was just kind of amazing. And then the, the, the third painting was for a man and he was, he's a manly man, you know? And so the lion came out looking like a manly man. And so um, it was it was just great, great lesson on how intention really, really affects your paintings. And so it's it's interesting because going to um, the conference in Santa Fe uh, uh, in September called the Gathering of the Creatives, that was one of the things that they really emphasized was, you know, what is your intention when you're painting? When you're, when you're creating, what is it? And, you know, in the past, I mean, I would, I would um, either have a vision or I would, a, a, a photograph would just, you know, capture my attention. And then I would, I would paint with that or I would put music on. And I listen to up, mostly upbeat music, um, music that makes me want to dance and feel good. Um, and so I, I never really thought about, you know, what was coming through in my paintings. And um, I, was, I was at a, um, an art festival with the first time I did a booth and um, two ladies had stopped and they liked my paintings. Well, they came back the next day and the lady said, we just had to come back and see your paintings. And um, she just kind of blurted out, are you a healer? And at the time, it was like I had just learned about reconnective healing and had gone through a session and was actually going um, to be going through training with it. And uh, I just automatically said yes, because I think we're all healers. Um, if we just believe that we're all healers, we can heal ourselves and we can get rid of all that emotional trauma that's in us and our body will just line up with our intention just like painting so this is what I'll do and then the, the bottom I will leave until later um, sometimes I forget to do the bottom and I'm ready to sell it and I'm thinking oh shoot I need to do the bottom but um, for for now I'll just let this sit um, and and kind of get um, Kind of more than tacky so that I can put on the I can actually really start painting and a lot of this is just going to be laying down a little bit um, straighter paint liquid more thick paint I don't do a lot of thick thick paint unless I start out with thick paint and I'm using a palette knife or something like that then it's really really thick but it's it's just really more thin layers this this is probably the thinnest layer in the sense that I'm using 
gamsole with it just to cover. And then I'm going to go a little bit thicker, um, but I'll be using, if I do anything with it, I'll be using liquid with it if I need to thin it. And then from there, I will start putting layers and layers of glazing. So this is, um, this is going to be a sunset painting. I'm not quite sure. I always title them, but it's after I look at them for a while and I, I just come up with a name. And so I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do series, um, just little snippets of everything one at a time and then kind of put them all together so you can go from one to the next to the next. But thanks for joining me and I hope this inspires you to put color on canvas. See you soon.